So this is work I've been doing with um, Bilal Nassim and uh, uh, Ellen Greaves on um, facilitating linkage between education administrative data and survey data. And um, as you all know, a lot of the survey data that CLOSA is involved with are generally longitudinal survey data, and they're increasingly getting permission to link to administrative data. And uh, going forward, people are hoping to link to health data, crime data, economic data, we hope, held by DWP and HRC. But probably the most prolific linkage to date has been with um, education data. And uh, for instance, um, MPD, National Pupil Database Data, has already been linked to ALSPAC, MCS, Next Steps, and Understanding Society. And uh, my talk today is about um, how best to do this um, longitudinally. Um, uh, you know, for, for instance, the MCS, we've only just got the second wave of a, a age 11 data link, but, but there are some problems with administrative data and administrative data linkage which we feel need to be solved um, if you're going to use these linkages to the full effect. So, so what's the problem? So you know, like with all administrative data sets, the National Pupil Database is, is an administrative data set set up for the Department for Education for specific purposes that it holds and um, and they don't always align with you know what we might want in terms of using research uh, with this data and in particular um, you know, when we link to survey data and and um, um, one particular problem that happens when you link administrative data to survey data with some but not all survey data and it depends on the, the data is that the data has to be anonymized so, so the schools, the current National Pupil Database is you know, a database of every single child in state and in some years private schooling. Um, and it's been operating, some individual data sets go back to 1996, school data sets go back to the 1992, and, but, and there's detailed individual data for everybody from 2001 to. But the key thing in this administrative data set in terms of how we link it over time and how we uh, look at progress of schools um, is that you, um, you have identifiers in the data. And one particular issue is the school identifier. And in the MPD, there is, the, the, there is meant to be a unique school identified called the URN. It's a publicly available identifier which you can anybody can have access to. Now, when this data is linked to some surveys, all the school identifiers are left in and not anonymized. So, so anybody could, if, if the early versions of Next Steps, you could, if you got access to the linked administrative data, you could look up the URN of the school, you could go and search online and find out which school it is and, you know, and, uh, and do your own investigation. But increasingly, and with the Millennium Cohort Study, we have to anonymise the school that the kids go to. It's part of the condition that you know, this data is accessed, that the school is effectively anonymised, and that creates all sorts of problems. So what we've done is develop a way of getting around some of the problems associated with this. And just, just to make a point that you know, in the old versions of the next steps where you can look up UN, it's, it's, it, it, it's very, you know, it takes two seconds if you know a school to find out what its URN is. So I just did a, a search of Padding, it's an academy URN on Google, and you know, basically the first entry had the URN mentioned twice. It is, you know, it's completely public information which is easy to look up. If you get this data, you can look up the URN of the school. If you know a kid's been in next steps, you could potentially you know, and identify that, you know, it's very easy to look up and increasingly surveys are anonymising this variable. Okay, so, so you'd think that's not a problem, it's a unique reference number, as long as you anonymise it in a consistent way, uh, then there'll be no problems and the analysis shouldn't uh, suffer from it. But, as with all administrative data sets, these URNs, these unique identifiers of schools, change for all sorts of good and bad reasons. Um, for instance, you know, there's been a huge range of, in, a huge increase in the number of academies. If a school changes to an academy, it becomes a new school and gets a new URN. 
So once the data is de-identified, you can see that a person in one year is in one school and then their identifier will change. It might be just that they're in exactly the same school, so it's a change to an academy status, but you will not know that. It will just be a new, new URN. And that you know, really has implications for how you use the survey data. Um, if two schools merge, new URN. In, in early days, if a school, there was, there was a boundary change for a local authority, the school didn't move, it didn't change status, it got a new URN because it was in a different local authority. You know, completely different reasons um, why the URN changed. So it is far from unique. So, so when you anonymise this data, particularly if you're using this data longitudinally, you might see a person change as school because they're, you are, you know, they're anonymized, pseudonymized school identifier changes and it might not be real. Or it might be for a specific reason, but you will never be able to <coughs> find out why. It's a pseudonymized identifier. You can't then go and look up why is this identifier changed because it doesn't mean anything. In the data sets where you've got URN, of course, you can go and say, OK, they've changed from this school to this school. You could look it up and <coughs> see that the reason why it changed is it changed to be an academy. OK. But, but it is a huge problem. It's not just a problem for a linkage to administrative data sets. It's a problem if people are using this administrative data and don't know that these URN changes for different reasons. And if they, you know, typically you use a multi-level model, you use a school identifier to, you know, estimate your school model, and you might be doing that completely wrongly if you don't go through and understand why the URN has changed. So it, it's very important. And it's not, as I said, these changes are happening a lot. So this is, you know, a list of all schools which, you know, are, are changing their URN just because of different reasons. So, it, you know, it's widespread and countrywide. So, so what we've done in a project, this project, is go back to 1992. We've got school databases going back to 1992, and we've documented every single change that a school's gone to including if it's changed its URN. And every time it changes its URN, we've documented why this has happened, whether it's because it's you know, moved, merged, closed, it is a new academy. We've got a single reason why for every single year when a school changes its URN, which when we link to administrative data, we can put in as a variable. So you know, when we take an individual and we track how their MPD school has changed over time and you see a change in identifier, we can have a variable saying the reason why this school, their identifier changes is that the school changed to an academy. Now, for some bits of research, you might want to treat that like they're in the same school. For other bits of research, you might want to treat it as a different school. It depends on your research question. But you need to know why the, the identifier changes. And, you know, every year, this is just looking at 2012 and 2013, um, uh, you know, there was about 13% of schools who URN, we couldn't match up between one year and another, either because it changed, it, they closed, they opened, so there, there is a big problem every year. Okay. So, and, and it makes a difference to your analysis. So, so, so um, in this, we've just used uh, MPD data to look at the impact of changing to an academy between 2010-11 and 2011-12 on, on outcomes uh, um, at key stage two. And if you don't take into account correctly changes to URNs, you basically estimate um, you know, the wrong effect of changing to an academy. This is just a very simplistic thing, but it's just showing you it really matters getting this right, particularly if you're doing analysis around schools. So, so, so what this project has done is try and consistently map all school changes between 1994 and we're at currently doing 2015. And we've done it in such a way that any survey that wants to link administrative data for any year, even if they want to anonymise a school identifier, should be able to do it and, and document why a school, the individual school identifier has changed. And we think that this will just, you know, really help make the data a lot more useful. Now, if it's with the MCS, we've never worried about this before. We only had basically seven-year-old data. It doesn't matter cross-sectionally because the school identifier is right in a single year. But now that we've got seven and eleven, you know, you've got people changing identifiers between year two and year six. Some of it because the schools changed to an academy. Some of it is because the child has moved from an uh, an infant to a junior school, 
you, you know, it's the same school, but one's called an infant, one's called, called a junior school. It has a different URN. You want to know. So, you know, so, so it's really important if you're doing longitudinal analysis, and particularly if you're seeing, you know, how outcomes vary over time and whether, you know, if it's different for those who stay in the same school or move or those who are in a school which has changed status versus those who move. It's really important that you get this right. You cannot do it at the moment with anonymized school data. So this is what this um, project has been about. I'm not going to go through. We've, 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 this has been a very laborious project, um, getting all the data, because DFE has actually thrown away all its school's data going back to 93. But we thankfully had copies of it. A few of us had copies of this. So we've restored it um, and kept it. And we've gone through and now have a consistent file going back from 1994. We're hoping to go back to 1993. We've got some data. It's not so great in 1993 because there was no URN in 1993. So we, but there was an identifier, so it's a bit more complicated. Uh, and we're doing it for 2015 at the moment. So we think this will be um, incredibly useful. And then it also allows you to consistently link to other school level files. So there's school level files on Key Stage 1, Key Stage 2, Key Stage 4, and Key Stage 5 files that go back to the 1990s. These data have uh, really useful variables in the percentage of free school meals. For years from 1996, they've got the number of four, five, six, seven, eight year olds by sex in every single school, state and private. So, you know, I've used this data to look at demand for private schooling because it, it's got fantastic data. But in order to understand what's happening, you need to know why a school identifier has changed and you need to be able to match schools over time. So, um, so you know, I, I, I'm not going to go through, because we haven't got much time, I'm not going to go through um, the sort of complicated process that we've done, but we've done this very consistently. I've only got five minutes. But basically what we've done now is we've created um, a variable where we've created a URN, a sort of a common URN for every single school in the country. And then for that URN, we've forward and backward linked every single um, school number that the school has ever changed, had. So let, let me talk about here. Here's a, a, a school, which it, it's a third school a new school which is a merger of two schools and what we've done is we've forwarded and backward linked so in this urn we've had every urn that's ever been used with this merged school either as a single school or as a joint school or you know as one of the two schools or the joint school and then we've you can see when it changed so when all the ids uh, uh, are the same and when it would they they were different so we're forward and backward linked um we've um you know, there's a, the, the, we've accounted for new schools, so we have this URN, so we, we create a unique URN, you can see when this school opened, so it opened in 2006, the Antalicia Academy of Bristol, and in the next one, this is um, the, the Paddington Academy that I looked up the URN before, so this used to be North Westminster Community School, and it became Paddington Academy. So the same site, same school, and we've consistently shown when this has happened and all the identifiers that have been used. So that when you're matching uh, in your survey data, you should be able to get this right. I mean, we've, we've documented this a lot better, but it's been a sort of painstaking task. So, so Ellen, what, what Ellen's idea is that if you want to anonymise, or if you want to anonymise the URN, you base it on this. This is everything that it could ever have been. And, then, and then, then from this data set, you can sort of say, OK, so, so, so this is it's a, a unique number which you, you know, when you're anonymization process, you have to come up with a, a, a match between this URN and, and some algorithm that does it properly. And then, then you have got a linkage file about when this changed and the reason why. So. We've just set it up that way for the particular projects we had. It was very handy having a, you know, a, a list of every single URN that's ever, ever been used for any school between 1992. So, and, and, but, but, of course, we mention it, it uh, and, then, and then we show the history of what happened to it. OK, so, 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 so we think that this has got huge <coughs> possibilities. We're going to make it publicly available. We're going to give all the do files and the data that we've used. We're just currently negotiating with DFE about how we give access to this. This was all publicly available data, which you know they just sent us over the over 
many years and you know there was never and you never had to go through an MPD request they've tightened up now and they're worried that some of the you know the percentage free school meals from some years might involve too small cell sizes and so we still haven't negotiated it but it should mean that anybody doing linkage to any survey data where there has been a unique a change in the anonymized school code for an individual will know why that code changed and anybody using MPD longitudinally can match to this file and understand without them doing all the research themselves why a person you know has changed school whether it's real or not so so we think it's a huge um, uh, benefit for lots of things and actually the school database itself would be very very interesting for people who want to look at changes over time in schools um, in, in different things because you can link results pupils and stuff like that so that's where we are and hopefully um, it will be useful. And I just sort of think it's got lots of applications because it's not just education administrative data where this happens, hospital data. You know, there's been trust changes, mergers, and I understand identifiers for hospitals have had you know, a similar potted history. You can imagine things with prisons. Um, you know, it, 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 it's, it is a problem when things get put into surveys. They have to be anonymized to pres preserve the an anonymity of the individual but you can lose vital information, so, so that's all I want to say.